I just got done seeing Terrifier 3 in the theaters and let's do a spoiler free review of the film. I got a lot to talk about here. We're going to go over the positives, the negatives, and then we'll give the movie a rating out of 10. So just some context of my interest in the Terrifier franchise. I didn't really like the first movie. I watched it like all the way back when it came out. I think it came out on Netflix like maybe a year later or something like that. And I checked it out and I thought it was whatever. It was one of those Netflix horror movies that you put on and you laugh with your friends, but you don't really actually think it's a great movie. You're just like, ah, that's just whatever. And that's just how it was for a while until Terrifier 2 came out. And I didn't really have any excitement for Terrifier 2 until I decided to react to it on my channel. If you want to see that reaction, link will be in the description. And I loved Terrifier 2. I thought it was a massive improvement over the first one. I thought it was actually like a decent slasher, had a lot of good gore, a lot of good kills. And there was an actual story there that you can grasp onto, actual interesting characters. So I was all for it, loved the soundtrack of that movie. There was just so much to it. So I was really excited for Terrifier 3. And I know everyone's gonna be wondering, did Terrifier 3 deliver? And I'm just gonna say right off the bat, yes. Yes, it did. This is without a doubt, the most boundary pushing and gory movie I have ever seen. Now, take that with a grain of salt because I haven't seen every movie on planet Earth. I've seen, you know, a little over a thousand movies at this point maybe like 300 horror films. I don't really know. I I, lo I logged them on Letterboxd. So if you want to look at all the movies I've seen, go, go, go take a look. But I, out of all the ones I've seen, you know, I don't dive too deep into like the, the really disturbing movies out there. I've seen the disturbing movie Iceberg. There's a certain, you know, spot there where I'm cutting it off because once it gets to like, you know, disgusting, like almost real movies, it's just, I'm just like, nah, I'm okay. But out of the stuff I've seen in my experience, I haven't seen something that's gone this far with it. And I mean, Terrifier 2 obviously already was doing that. It was already pushing boundaries, but there are some specific boundaries here that I don't want to get into because I would say they're kind of spoilers, but like it's stuff that you won't, there's a, a large group of people that's immediately not going to like this movie because of it. And that's completely fair. Like I, I would understand why someone wouldn't want to watch the movie because of this. But for me personally, although it was really hard to watch and it was like anxiety inducing to the ninth degree. It, it worked for me though. Like it genuinely didn't take me out of the movie. It didn't ruin the film for me. It was pushing boundaries in a way that just shocked me. But it, I think that gave me a pretty illicit reaction to the movie in a way that makes it kind of effective. I don't know. I'm all for pushing boundaries in movies as long as there's, you know, some level of taste to it and you're not just doing it for the sake of grossing people out. And I feel like, yeah, OK, a big part of this movie is just trying to gross you out. But there is actual purpose to what they're doing here. They are trying to be effective in the way the movie's being made. And I do feel like it's all handled well. But there's quite a lot of scenes in this movie that just, oh, my God, man, they don't stop with the gore. It is insane how much they show and they find some really creative ways to have art the clown kill people in this movie like way more creative than we've ever seen before and they were already pretty creative even in the first movie which i didn't like too much they had a couple of creative kills there the sequel obviously had a lot of creative ones too but this one it is probably some of the most creative kills i've ever seen in a horror film and some of them were just absolutely fantastic some of them were so disgusting that I had to look away. Like, I don't usually look away in horror movies. I'm not the type of person to do that. I, I I really don't. I had to, though. Like, it was so bad, I was starting to feel kind of sick. That is the type of movie this is. So if you are very squeamish, I would recommend not seeing this. And I'm not usually squeamish. So the fact that even me was getting that reaction out of this, that tells you something. That tells you that they're doing some really out there things in this movie. But of course, you know, I was seeing it in a theater with a with a packed group of people. So I think that's obviously going to add to it a little bit more when everyone's like jumping and screaming. And it definitely adds to the experience. I'm not sure how different that would be if you're watching it at home. But for sure, this movie is disgusting. It's despicable but it's kind of effective in that manner. I mean, you're watching the movie for that, right? But usually how these movies work, they usually extend these scenes out as much as they can, which that's usually what makes it hard to watch. It's not the gore itself. It's the fact that the gore lasts for like four minutes long. That's what makes it hard to watch. I mean, most horror movies, when there's, a, you know, even the most gory horror movies I've ever seen, usually they cut away after a certain point. They're like, okay, we've shown enough. Let's cut away from it. That's not how these terrifying movies work. They show it for like a minute, two minutes, whatever, straight. And it's just disgusting. And the sound design is so good. The practical effects are so good. They look so real. Like I, I, I 
it's hard to like discern it from reality. It's not, it's not like a movie where you're just laughing at the effects of how bad they are. No, because these effects aren't bad. These effects are insanely good. So you're just like sitting there like, oh my God, there's maybe like one effect in this movie, one scene that I feel like maybe you can be like, oh, okay, yeah, they kind of didn't do an amazing job with that one. But like 90% of them here, it was just insane work. Damien Leone is just absolutely incredible at what he does here. And I, I mean, I love his Terrifier films and I can't wait to see the fourth one, but I kind of wanted to do some other stuff too, because I would love to see his insane abilities here put to some other franchises as well. I think that would be cool, but you know, these Terrifier films are great, so I hope they keep doing them. And I've been talking about gore for like five minutes. Let's get into the actual story itself. Is the story good? Yeah, I would say so. I would say it keeps pretty much consistent with the second film. If you liked the story of that one, if you thought that was interesting, if you thought the characters were good there, it's pretty much the same. I would say Sienna is much more improved in this movie. I mean, I thought she was great in the sequel, don't get me wrong, but she's even better here because her character now obviously has a lot more depth after what she's been through in the second film. So they gave a lot more for her to do in this movie. And Lauren Levera does a fantastic job in the role, like some amazing performances, amazing scenes that she gets in this movie. In particular, there's one scene involving fighting Art the Clown. That's all I'm gonna say. It is probably one of the most badass scenes in a horror movie ever. And I was just like, holy shit, this is awesome. Like that, you know, I, I obviously the kills are usually what you come to these movies for, but don't get me wrong, seeing Sienna kick ass was, was actually even better than anything else in this movie. There's also some new characters. One character in particular is a little girl named Gabby. She's Sienna's cousin and she's pretty cool. She has a couple of, of good scenes and I think she's a good, you know, part of this franchise. I will say, I think this movie balances the supernatural and the gritty elements of the Terrifier movies quite well. I feel like the first movie was all grittiness. It was very grounded. There really wasn't much supernatural stuff going on, maybe like one or two moments, but for the most part, it was pretty grounded. The second one kind of went crazy with the supernatural stuff towards the end of the movie, even so much to the point where when I first watched the movie, I kind of thought it was off-putting. I was like, well, what was all this stuff? I thought this movie was supposed to be grounded and they just went insanely supernatural with it. But honestly, I kind of, looking back on it, like that part of Terrifier 2 quite a bit. I thought it worked. I just thought it was maybe too sudden. But this one it does bring in some of those supernatural elements again, but it kind of balances it better with the grounded stuff. They get a lot of time to focus on the tone of that first film and, and keep it you know, in this movie. So all that stuff was really cool. They didn't go overboard with anything supernatural related. They just had some of it here or there and it fits in quite nicely with the movie. I also think despite the movie having obviously a much higher budget than the first two films, they've just been getting a higher budget after, you know, each movie because more people are seeing them. And, you know, but despite that, they're still retaining the same tone and feel of the other two movies, which I think is a really interesting thing that they're able to do. Now, that's not to say it's like an insanely high budget or anything. I believe it's like a 2 million budget or something like that. I think the second one was 250,000. So obviously it's a pretty big improvement over the second film. I'm sure the first film was even lower, but it's not like, you know, we're not going like a hundred million dollar movie here. That would be insanely ridiculous, but still, even with a higher budget, it still retains that feel of the first two. And I think that just is really cool. I think they utilize the Christmas theme of the movie quite well. I was really looking forward to seeing it be Christmas themed. I thought that was a cool route to go and they do a great job with it. There's a lot of interesting Christmas related things that get involved in the movie. Obviously, Art the Clown is wearing a Santa Claus costume for some of the movie. You see that in the trailers and I don't know, I think it's a cool little detail that they decided to go with and it, it worked for me for the most part. And obviously one of the best positives is of course, Art the Clown himself, played by David Howard Thornton. Absolutely incredible job. Probably the best performance from him in any of these movies. Because I mean, of course he's supposed to be this terrifying figure. He's supposed to be this terrifying character. But at the same time, he's also kind of funny. Like he has a both sides to him. And this movie somehow manages to balance that almost perfectly. Like I think the other two movies did fine with it, don't get me wrong, but the balance between him being just absolutely terrifying every time he's on screen, but also just kind of making you laugh quite a bit. I mean, I, I laughed a lot in this movie. There was many moments I was dying of laughter, but he, the next scene, he will have you like piss in your pants. Like it's insane how fast he can just change like that, but it's just incredible. There's actually another big character in this movie that is also 
really, really fantastic. And this is Victoria. So Victoria is a character. You might not even know who that is, but she was in the first film. She was also in the second film only for a little bit. She didn't have a big role to play in those movies, but now she is a pretty primary role in this film. And she is absolutely phenomenal. I would say she's almost just as good as Art the Clown. She's not as funny necessarily, but she definitely has a terrifying side to her. I actually, there was a couple of scenes I laughed from her. I mean, it was almost like an uncomfortable laughter though. Like it, it was just, I don't know. You have to watch the movie to know what I'm talking about. But oh my God, man, there are some, there are some sick stuff in this movie. That's all I'll say. But of course the movie isn't perfect. Let's get into some of the negatives. One of the negatives I thought of leaving the theater, actually I felt this kind of throughout most of the movie, is I just don't think the soundtrack was that great, especially compared to the second film. And maybe this wouldn't be a problem if the second film's soundtrack wasn't so good, but I was just expecting another fantastic soundtrack because genuinely Terrifier 2 has one of my favorite soundtracks of any horror movie ever. And I'm talking licensed music and the like original music for the movie, like the entire soundtrack was phenomenal. This one, you know, they throw in a lot of Christmas songs there. Obviously I was expecting that, but there really wasn't enough to like compete with how good the second film's soundtrack was. I just, I didn't hear much of it. Even Art's theme, like his main theme, it doesn't really get played that much in the movie. I don't know. I was just kind of disappointed with the soundtrack there. I wish they did a little bit more with it. There was some good music there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying everything sucked. It just wasn't nearly as good as that second film. I thought that one was just so fantastic with its soundtrack. And the last negative I want to give, I genuinely don't have that many negatives to give, is the character of Jonathan. That was, of course, Sienna's brother. He doesn't really have a lot to do do in this movie unfortunately he's in it don't get me wrong but like I kind of wish we saw more of him because he was a pretty important part of the second film and I, I kind of wish we saw just at least a couple more scenes with him overall I still like this performance I just feel like he didn't play a big enough role in the movie unfortunately all in all I'm gonna give this movie an 8.5 out of 10 it is definitely worth seeing just please please if you are squeamish if you don't like very gory movies if you feel like you won't be able to handle that stuff i would just i just wouldn't spend the time to see it but if you want to challenge yourself and you really want to push you know what you're able to watch it's worth it i think it is it is a fun movie it is fantastic see it with a group of friends they will all be screaming they'll be closing their eyes they'll be you know there were some people in the theaters that were sitting there like this the whole time i was like how are you not like reacting to this at all i mean well clearly they were not born to be youtube reactors that's maybe why i'm a youtube reactor because <laughs> like some people think i fake my reaction sometimes but like if you were looking at me in the theater you, you can clearly sell i'm not no cameras on me in the theater i was sitting there in the seats going like oh like, i was doing that the whole time i was probably pissing people off around me but like genuinely that was just an honest reaction to seeing this movie it was just that disgusting and insane that you just couldn't help but make faces and, and yell out loud. It, just, it happened. It had to happen. But it is still a solid movie. Probably one of the best horror movies of this year. I guess I haven't really seen that many horror movies this year. But regardless, definitely worth seeing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Peace out.